excited to be checking on something today. I recently saw some honeybees in my beehive. And I didn't buy any bees this year, so these would be wild bees that are trying to move in. June is typically a time of year when bees will swarm. Their hives will split because they get too many bees and they'll divide and that's how they multiply and continue to have more beehives. So I was hoping that I had some wild Washingtonian bees that had moved into my hive. That happens often in my beehives. I've been keeping bees for 15 years and I have really enjoyed it. It was fun to use when we were homeschooling. One of my daughters in particular was my little bee buddy and she had her own little bee suit and would come out and help me. And She sold the honey. She, her business was called The Nectar Collector. And we have some really good memories, but I haven't been doing very well with it the last few years. So I have been trying to decide what I'm gonna do with the beehives. I, I love seeing them in my garden, but I don't eat honey anymore. I don't eat any sugar, even natural sugars. So just, just wondering if it's really serving me well anymore. And today I'm going to make that decision. Unfortunately, it looks like those bees were not a hive. They were just coming from their own hive and they were stealing the honey out of my hive and taking it back to theirs. So I now have no honey, no bees, and I have yellow jackets in here that are also stealing the, the last of the honey. So I'm kind of disappointed. I definitely need to get all of this equipment out of the elements because I'm just letting it get ruined. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to do a better job in my life of living more intentionally, focusing on the things that are absolutely essential in my life. And as we know, the enemy of the best is the good, unfortunately. It's those things that you would give them maybe a, a B instead of an A plus in your life. And I think this is one of those things. The B's are a B. And I need to pass this equipment on to someone that can really enjoy it before it gets ruined with time and weather damage. One thing I'm learning about letting go is that once you open your hand to release something, you inevitably make room to receive something new in that open hand. I lost my mom last fall and started growing dahlias to remember her. These are the first blooms. It's like collecting eggs for the first time when your hens start laying so proud. My mom was actually one of four major losses for me in the last couple of years. Some pieces have been restored to me, others have not. But I'm expectant to see what God has planned next for my life. My hands are open. Well, this may be sort of a strange lead in to today's topic, this idea of letting go, but there's a lot of psychology in interior design and I do want to spend time on it frequently with you guys so that you're, you're analyzing your own mindsets, you're analyzing your own thought processes 
understanding where they came from, understanding how they're holding you back. And so this is one. It's the idea of letting go, what's stopping you from letting go, and how that is holding you back in a room, especially when you're in the throes of trying to figure out the design for a space and you know it could be better and you just cannot figure out what it is and so you're stuck. Oftentimes there's something that you need to let go of. There's a piece or several pieces that are not serving you well anymore. Accent furniture is a classic um, culprit for being in a space that it shouldn't be in anymore. So when I'm talking about accent pieces, let's just define this here. Accent pieces are the little pieces of furniture. They're not the big pieces. It's not the desk. It's not the bed. It's not the couch or the dining room table. These pieces are the focal point and they actually define the space that you're working in. They, def they give the room its name. So we're not talking about any of that type of furniture. That's, that's for another day that we could talk about. And those, those things are decided very early on in the design process. Accent furniture comes in at the very end. It's a finishing touch. It really can round things out and bring in a very unique, customized, moved in feel to a space. And these are the pieces that can really clog up a design, especially when you're trying to change out later. When I walk into a space and I see a lot of accent furniture just kind of crammed every which way and especially lining the outside like the perimeter of the room, if you have a lot of that going on, I think number one, I instinctively think this person is very frustrated with their space because that's something that we, that we will do as a coping mechanism when we don't know what to do we will oftentimes get the little things and get lots of them so we don't do the windows and we don't change out the light and we don't get the big area rug instead we get all these little pieces and we just keep trying trying to feel better or we or we just cover the mantle in you know 10 different pieces of decoration that don't go together at all that is a sign of frustration and even like a confusion about design. So accent furniture will tell you that sometimes if you have too much of it. Also I think, you know what, maybe you've inherited a lot of things. Accent furniture would be um, console tables, it would be all the little tables, right? So coffee table, end tables, um, martini tables, you know, those little tiny table, you know, next to a chair. It could be footstools, it could be accent chairs, garden stools, bar carts, tea carts, or like cabinet type pieces, like storage type pieces. There might be too many of these going on in maybe a kitchen. So it's those small pieces. All of these odd little things that you feel like, eh, maybe I don't really need it, but you could, but you kind of maybe try to work it in. One of our fellow YouTube viewers responded to the last video that she didn't know what to do about a bar cart. She didn't know she could use it in sort of a cottage core setting and I think absolutely you can use a bar cart. I think they're such great pieces and you don't have to put alcohol on it. That's not required. You could fill it with books. You could fill it with flowers or plants or do whatever you want. I, I have no issues with bar carts and where you can and cannot use them and I think that even if it has a little bit of sort of a, a touch of a modern fez with the little, just straight lines, you know, and gold. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think oftentimes, especially in a cottage core or a super kind of, kind of a country, like feminine type room, you can get a little too feminine. And so bringing in some straight lines and solid colors, I feel like brings a good balance to a space. So I think it's a good move. Another time that you may find yourself over collecting accent furniture is if you are especially new, it's kind of a rookie move, if you are new to the thrifting and the DIY world. These pieces pop up, they look cute, they're on the side of the road, they are just a few dollars at the garage sale and you just start collecting them because they feel like low commitment, but they still do cause space issues in a home where they're not supposed to be there. So be careful if you're new to this whole thrifting and DIY thing. 
Only collect pieces that are perfect 10 in your mind. You'll get more strict as you go on because you get sick of all the stuff in your garage that's not working for you. So let's actually talk about when to use accent furniture because I think that would actually be really helpful about now. And I have three times that I see in the design process that we need some accent furniture. It's not just a given that, oh, we just need to fill every single corner and, and or we just have all these pieces and so we have to use them. No, 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 no. You need accent furniture for storage. And maybe you can rethink the pieces that are being used as storage and think, you know, maybe I could put those quilts on the closet shelf or something where you could release that piece of furniture that needs to go. You can find the storage space under your bed or in a closet and not have to need that piece needed. Okay, so storage is one. The second time that I am gonna start looking for accent furniture goes back to Sister Parrish. If you're familiar with her, she is a famous American interior designer and she had a firm with Albert Hadley. She passed away in 1994, but her ideas are still affecting us today very much. There's a Sister Parrish Instagram account. And one of the things that I remember about her most of all is that she was a stickler for insisting that people had a place to always put their drink down. So with every seating space. Every place that someone could sit down, she was going to be making sure that they could have a place that was within arm's reach. I mean, it's just a simple measurement. Arm's reach, every single person need to be able to put down um, a cup of coffee. For us, it would be an iPad, you know, a book, or whatever they're doing in that seat. They need to comfortably be able to set something down. And it could be a console table behind the couch. I'm I'm not opposed to that. Sometimes a coffee table isn't gonna work in a space because it's a walkway or something, and so use a console table or use end tables. But that is definitely a time that we have to make sure we have accent furniture. And the third time, which is a little bit, I, I think maybe a little bit tricky to understand when it's needed, it's when you have an odd corner, kind of an an ugly corner or things are just coming together in a way that's not super pleasing to the eye and so you kind of want to round it out you want to soften it you want to camouflage it a little bit that's a great time to put in an accent chair put in a trunk or something in that just masks that corner that's not really working so I hope that helps Think about the accent furniture that you're using. Is it for storage? Is it for convenience and comfort of the person sitting in a chair? Or is it to mask an awkward corner and soften it? And maybe you'll find that you need to get a couple more pieces. Or, or most likely I would say you'll find that you would like to actually release a piece that's no longer serving you. All right, thank you so much for watching. And if you're new here, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button so I can send you more videos on how to make interior design easy. Take care and I'll talk to you soon.